Hey there, Marcy. You're not doing anything tomorrow, right? Right? You're pregnant, so I'm sure you wouldn't have any plans to go out or anything. Hey, Nina. What's my sister-in-law doing messaging me out of the blue like this? No, I don't have any plans for tomorrow. Did you want something? I have to meet someone on short notice tomorrow. That's where you come in. I was hoping to ask you a little favor. A favor? Well, you see, the kids are off to school, with it being Saturday tomorrow. I was supposed to be watching Billy, but this thing came up and there's no way I can get out of it. He's still in elementary school, so I can't exactly leave him at home. I'm in a real pinch here. Okay, I see. Let me guess. You want me to look after Billy for tomorrow? I'm afraid that's going to be a little difficult. I'm really sorry to spring this on you, Marcy, but I don't know who else to ask. I'm in a really difficult spot here. You've always been really kind to me in the past, and you've done favors for me before. And I know that with you watching him, my mind will be at ease because you're so reliable. Nina, please. I can't do this again. Did you totally forget what happened last time I looked after him? He rampaged around my house like a little whirlwind. He was out of control, and I had no idea how to calm him down. Maybe so, but that was ages ago. He's much more mature now. I bet you barely recognize him. It was last month. He smashed my vacuum cleaner to pieces by swinging it around like a baseball bat, hung the cat upside down by his tail, ripped my curtains off the hooks by trying to climb up them, poured Pepsi all over my sofa. He stuffed the toilets full of toilet paper and blocked the pipes. I had to buy a new vacuum cleaner and have some of the upholstery on the sofa replaced because of him. And I can assure you, it wasn't cheap. Kids will be kids. Why you gotta make a mountain out of a molehill? There's no use crying over his spilled milk. <laughs> if you thought I was mad, you should have seen my husband. He was furious. Kids will be kids doesn't cover the untold havoc and destruction he wrecked on our house. So he has a mischievous streak. Well, so what? They all go through that phase. How can being full of energy be a bad thing? You're gonna have a little one on your own to think about soon. Think of it as training. Imagine how much easier it's going to be to look after your own if you practice with my Billy now while you still can. I'm heavily pregnant, Nina. Even if his mischievous streak is just a phase, I don't have the energy or movement capabilities to deal with it right now. What if something happened to him? If I'm completely honest, the thought of having him scares me, Nina. If you're going to live your life in fear of tiny probabilities, you may as well never leave the house in case you get hit by a bus. <laughs> He'll be fine. Stop worrying. Anyways, this is getting nowhere. You know you'll enjoy his company. Just take him. Just let him do his thing. He doesn't need constant attention or anything. I bet you'll barely notice he's there. Give him free reign of the house, go about your day as normal, and I'll have him back before you know it. Let him have free range on the house? That's exactly what I can't do! I can't risk him turning the place upside down like that again, which means I'd have to keep a constant eye on him, which I'm just not capable at this state. Fine, I get it. You don't want any trouble, right? No problem. I'll make sure he's on his best behavior. Happy now? Great, it's settled then. I'll be dropping him off tomorrow morning. Thanks, Marcy. You're a star. See ya. Thanks a bunch for today, Marcy. But I just got a message from my brother. He said he's bringing Billy back already? Why? Already? It's 7pm. He was never supposed to be staying the night. Your husband was really surprised too. He said he'd have come pick him up if he knew. Did you not tell him we were having him? Why would I go out of my way to let my husband know you were watching Billy? He's busy enough as he is. Besides, today was a last minute thing. 
hardly fair of me to go springing char for duty on him at such a short notice. Hey, you didn't go on saying anything you shouldn't, did you? Saying anything I shouldn't? Such as? Like the stuff Billy did to your house when he got overexcited last time. I bet he was as good as gold today. Right? Right? Not at all. He broke our TV remote. He also completely ruined one of Trent's expensive leather work shoes. Oopsies. Whatever are we gonna do with that boy? Oh, kids will be kids. It can't be helped. Surely, you get that. Yeah, of course I do. But I also get that when a child rampages out of control, it's the parent's job to take responsibility for its behavior. That's why I told your husband everything. Huh? You did what now? Why would you even do such a thing? He's gonna be furious with me. So what? Things in my house are actually broken because of your kid. Not only that, but he was so disrespectful to me and Trent. I've never known a little boy to have such a foul mouth before. I just can't stand by pretending nothing happened. I know this can't be an easy decision for you to have, but please, just give up. Like hell I'm giving up. Who do you think you are, talking smack about my kids like this? What gives you the right? He's not even yours. There's nothing wrong with my Billy. I'm not talking smack. I'm just saying it how it is. He's a full of energy, and he isn't afraid to say what's on his mind. Taken on their own, I think those are good traits to have. But on the other hand, he was a wild, violent side, which in combination with his boundless energy and straight talking personality is a recipe for disaster. A wild, violent side? What's that supposed to mean? I think you know what it means. He loses his temper and has violent tantrums whenever he doesn't get his way. He swears, he shouts, and he's impossible to control. Especially for someone as heavily pregnant as me and Trent hesitates to interfere too forcefully because he's not our kid. To be honest, Nina, the whole situation makes us feel both super awkward and uncomfortable and we'd rather do without it all. Are you prepared to acknowledge that this is a little unfair to us? He's in elementary school. What can you do? Shouldn't you be doing something precisely because he's in elementary school? Can you imagine how much he'll struggle in life if he doesn't stop acting this way soon? It almost doesn't bear thinking about it. Do you want him to have a difficult life? What the hell does that have to do with you? You better not be telling me how to raise my boy, Nina. You keep your unsolicited opinions to yourself. We value individuality and we're not about to suppress the way he expresses himself just because you and my stuck-up brother find it inconvenient. Don't think being my sister-in-law gives you the right to question my parenting skills. Respect my boundaries. Boundaries were disrespected the moment your son damaged our property. It became our business the moment you took it upon yourself to leave him at our house. God, you're annoying. Just shut up. You think you're so clever, don't you? You don't even have kids on your own. Don't preach at me, woman. Okay, Nina, if that's your attitude, I have nothing more to say to you. You can speak to your brother directly from now on. I'm done with this conversation. There are a few things about Billy that have been bugging him for a while now, so this is the perfect opportunity for you guys to get everything out in the open. Wait, is he still complaining about me? You do seriously need to learn to respect boundaries. Ugh. Chill. It's not like he's bad-mouthing him. It's about his breathing. He's breathing? What are you talking about? You know? My dad had diabetes before he died, right? Um... I might have heard some things about that. I think I remember you telling me he died the year before last, but... What about diabetes? We noticed it when Billy was playing in the living room yesterday, but we think he might be diabetic. What? Are you trying to say my Billy is fat? Sure, maybe he's a little on the larger side, but so what? He's maybe one size bigger than his classmates at best. Hardly diabetes territory. Who do you think you are calling someone else's kids fat? I'm not really calling him fat. You're the one who said it, Nina. 
I'm just saying, we think there might be a possibility he has diabetes. But yeah, you know what? Screw it. To be completely honest, he isn't healthily overweight and I think you should do something about it. There it is. I knew it. You're nothing but a bully. So what if he's carrying an extra few pounds? Are you a doctor? No. So get off your high horses. What the hell are you basing this on anyway? He's overweight and his breathing's heavy. He was saying he had such a stomachache partially the whole time he was with us. When we asked him about it, he said he felt like that almost every day. Did you know? I bet you just made him eat something weird. We really didn't. How about thinking about what your son actually said before accusing me of poisoning him? Even if he doesn't have diabetes, it's still not normal for an 8-year-old to be suffering with chronic stomach aches every day. I don't need you to tell me that, Captain Obvious. Listen to me and listen to me clearly. If my husband gets mad at me over this, it's all your fault. I'll never forgive you if he does. You better prepare yourself for the hell I'm about to unleash on you. Oh my god, I can't believe you let an 8 year old kid send you flying down a flight of stairs. I get that you're pregnant, but do you have literally zero physical strength? Being a mom is a really physical job, you know, Marcy? You'll never make it if this is what you're made of. You should start working out while you still have any free time left. <laughs> You got some nerve to laugh at me after what just happened. You might not have been the one who did it, but it's your fault I ended up tumbling down a flight of stairs, Nina. My fault? I get that you're mad, but please, Marcy, let's be real. I had no idea that was gonna happen. <laughs> I burst out laughing and spat my coffee out all over the TV when I heard. <laughs> The only reason I let him in is because you said he was coming to apologize. I had no idea he was going to throw a baseball at me. I'm covered in cuts and bruises and have a sprained wrist thanks to you. You have no idea? I was more surprised than anyone. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to throw it so hard. It's not Billy's fault you lost your balance and fell all by yourself. <laughs> you should be more careful in the future. Be careful of what? Spiteful little brats and their deranged mothers. Thankfully, it was only half flight of stairs, so all things considered, I got off lightly. I shudder to think what might happen if I fell from any higher. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Oh, lighten up, you drama queen. He's just a kid. Stop being so hard on him. <laughs> I said this before, but the he's just a kid line will only get you so far. I find it horrifying that you're capable of laughing in a situation like this. Isn't there even a small part of you that thinks what you and your son did was horrible? You were the only one who got hurt. What's the big deal? Sure, you might be pregnant, but the baby's okay, right? God, who knew you were such a whiner? No use crying over spilled milk, sweetie. <laughs> Surely everything's fine if your baby's okay? No. Huh? What do you mean, no? I mean, everything is not fine. No way. You have got to be kidding me. How could the baby be hurt? The flight of stairs was tiny. No way. I don't believe it. Surely, this can't be. Oh, forgive me! Looks like I gave you the wrong idea. The baby's fine. You saw me fall backwards covering my stomach right jesus marcy don't scare me like that i almost had a heart attack you made me think i was about to get knocked at the door from the cops this is no good for my heart don't ever do that again you're right how careless of me still you're not out of the woods yet turns out billy's not doing so great after all uh-huh what do you mean your husband came over the other day that's when he told me that Billy got diagnosed with diabetes when his test results came back from the hospital. Really? No way. I bet you're just trying to scare me. Like I do that at all, let alone over something like this. It's the truth, Nina. 
He was really grateful. He said he never would have had him checked if not for me. You're not home now, right? Your husband said he wants to speak to you when you get back. Oh my god. How could my Billy... The type of diabetes he has is a lifestyle disease. You should have paid more attention to his diet and exercise habits. Your husband's besides himself with guilt. He's beating himself up saying he should have been around more. Why does my Billy have to suffer but your baby is fine? This isn't fair. Don't screw me around, Marcy. Is resentment towards my unborn baby for being healthy really the position you're going to take on this? Just when I thought you couldn't sink any lower. If you have enough free time to be sending me these petty, childish messages, you should go home and speak to your husband. Something tells me you're going to be doing some serious talking about your futures. It probably won't be an easy conversation to have, but it can't be a void. Marcy, you knew this was going to happen, didn't you? Is this your way of taking revenge on me? Are you messaging me at this time? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't play dumb with me. You're the worst. How could you do this to me? I hate you! How are you going to make this right? I'm repeating myself, but again, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're free to get angry, but at least explain first so I have some context. How am I supposed to reply if I don't know what you mean? My husband told me. We have to put Billy on a calorie-restricted diet from now on until he loses weight. Do you have any idea how Billy reacted when he found out? He's going berserk! What a surprise! I can hardly say I'm shocked from how he behaved when he stayed with us. How do you expect him to have any discipline or emotional control when you give him whatever he wants, whenever he wants it? He broke all of my favorite ornaments. You will pay for this. Tell me how you're gonna fix it now! How I'm gonna fix it? I don't see how this has anything to do with me. It has everything to do with you. You're the one who told my husband. He's almost as angry as Billy. He flipped out at me for what happened with Billy's baseball prank. Apparently, I'm the wrong because you're pregnant and it was dangerous. <laughs> Whatever. Of course he's gonna be mad. You're lucky I didn't have a miscarriage. Even still, I'm injured myself, you know? Your husband apologized profusely and agreed you pay me compensation if I agree not to take things to court. But it'd be well within my rights to press charges if I wanted to. Whatever. Quit droning on me, Marcy. You're so boring. The issue here is that my husband is demanding I come up with compensation money I don't have. I don't have the kind of cash. What are you suggesting I do? Get a job? Sure. Why not? Not that I care how you do it, though. I'm already happy your husband already agreed to pay me a whole lot in one go tomorrow, so he's the one you're technically going to be in debt to. How you come up with that cash ain't my problem. Well, it is my problem. It's a big problem for me. Why? Think about it. Billy has to go on a calorie-restrict diet for months, which means that not only do I have to work, I have to look for work while looking after a rampaging 8-year-old who starts smashing up my house the moment I refuse him candy. I can't do that, and you can't expect me to. If you want to know the reason for Billy's rampages, and the reason for how he got fed in the first place, how about you look in the mirror? You have no choice but to accept and make the best of it. This cannot be happening. Why did everything go so wrong? Why is this only happening to me? You said it yourself, you value individuality. This is the result of that policy. You have no choice but to resign yourself to and accept the situation you created. Kids will be kids, right? Surely, you're not going to suppress the way Billy expresses himself just because you find it inconvenient. After that, Nina started working part-time while trying to keep an eye on top of Billy's raging tantrums at home. Unlike his wife, Nina's husband is a decent guy. He seems to feel a strong sense of responsibility for his son's tantrums, and even more so for the diabetes diagnosis, and he is doing his best to help out with everything regarding his son. But he has no patience left for his wife, and even to this day, he continues to extract the monthly repayments from her on the compensation he paid me. 
to tell you the truth, I was sure that he was gonna divorce over what happened. But apparently, he wants to give her one last chance. And somehow or other, they're still just about hanging on by a thread. There's also the fact that divorce probably lead to Nina getting custody of Billy. He probably can't bear the thought of letting that pair of them loose on the world, both because of the damages they do to society, but also themselves. So he's staying close by to make sure neither of them do anything too outrageous. I hope Nina takes a long, hard look at herself in the mirror and realizes how lucky she is to have such a devoted and forgiving husband. I like to believe that we all have the capacity for change, and I've got my fingers crossed that my sister-in-law will use this experience to become a better person. As for me, my injuries from falling down the flight of steps healed up nicely, and not long after the events for today's episode, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. As stressful as the whole thing was, I'm actually grateful for Nina and Billy, because they taught me a lot about the world and myself. I'm going to raise my son using them as examples of how not to behave. Katie, I want you to answer my call. What? I told you to do things around the house today because I'm going out. I know, but I had been cleaning the room and suddenly got dizzy and nauseous. What? You got dizzy and nauseous? Yeah. I feel sick even now looking at a phone screen. That's why I want you to answer my call. I can't. You're overreacting. It's just dizziness and nausea. Do you want me to worry about you that badly? <laughs> That's not what I'm doing. I've never felt sick like this before. I do feel bad for bothering you when you are out, but can you please come home early just for today? What do you want me to do if I come home early? Do you think you'll feel better if I come home? No, I want you to take me to the hospital. What? Hospital? Are you seriously going to the hospital just for dizziness and nausea? How weak are you? Just dizziness and nausea? I've been getting a cold sweat too. I've never felt sick like this before. I hope it's not anything serious. But if it is, it's better to see a doctor sooner rather than later. Then why don't you go to the hospital by yourself? What do you need me for? I'm scared to drive in my condition. So please, drive me to the hospital. No way! I'm enjoying a day out. Why should I go along with such a stupid reason to take you to the hospital? Stupid reason? Aren't you worried about me? Not really. Everyone gets dizzy sometimes. You must have told me that you got a cold sweat and nausea because you want me to worry about you. <laughs> I told you that's not it. Please, Katie, just for today. You can go out again after taking me to the hospital. You're so annoying. I said no. I'm having a good time. Don't get in my way. Please. I'm really sick. You're overreacting. Why don't you call an ambulance if you're so sick? Oh no. Wait. Don't. The neighbors are going to gossip about us. I'm sure you'll get better after getting some rest. Don't forget to do things around the house. Bye. A few hours later. Hey, Nick. My parents called me and told me you're hospitalized. Are you actually hospitalized? Oh, it's you. I am, actually. They told me I have to stay in the hospital for a while. I'm sorry for making you worry. For making me worry? I'm not worried about you. Um, but... Your husband is hospitalized. So what? So what? I don't know how much you exaggerated your condition. But everything worked out for you because you got hospitalized. <laughs> everyone worries about you now, like you want it. Oh wait, not everyone. I'm not worried about you. You don't care about me, just as I thought. I bet it's not anything serious. You shouldn't have caused my parents trouble. Did you call my parents to tell them about it? I didn't. The doorbell rang soon after we texted. I crawled on the floor to open the door and your mother was there. Then she took me to the hospital. Your father came to the hospital, too, after a while. What? Why did you get my parents involved? My dad scolded me, saying, What were you doing, Gal, when your husband was sick? I'm sorry. Your parents asked me. Why didn't you call Katie? And I told them that I did, but you were busy. You're so useless. 
My parents think I'm the bad guy. I'm sorry. You're such a nuisance. And? What was the cause? It was probably just fatigue or something, right? I just got tested. I'll get the result later. The doctor suggested having my family with me when I hear the results. I want you to be there to hear the result with me if you can. What time do you think you can come to the hospital? What are you talking about? I'm not going to the hospital. What? Are you not coming? Why do I have to be there? You can hear the result on your own, can't you? It's your diagnosis. Why should I go out of my way to hear the result? I just told you. The doctor told me to ask my family to come and hear the result together. Oh, you're so clingy. I don't care about your health. Plus, I made plans after you told me you were hospitalized. What? Y you made plans? Do you have no intention of coming to the hospital at all? That's what I've been telling you. I'm going on a trip. A, a trip? You've got to be joking. Your family has been required in an emergency hospitalization, and you made plans for a trip? Are you serious? If I am, what's the problem? I'm always serious. But... Oh, you're so annoying. What did you just say? You are crazy for planning a trip when your husband's hospitalized. Your parents will get mad too. What? Who do you think you are? Are you acting big because my parents are on your side? Listen, my parents are sympathetic to you. Just because you have no parents and they feel sorry for you. They feel sorry for me? Obviously. They feel sorry for you because you lost your parents in an accident. That's why they treat you kindly as their son-in-law. <laughs> They're not actually worried about you. Don't take their kindness the wrong way. <laughs> why do you say such a thing? Even if that's true, I still care for them as my parents-in-law. They cared about me enough to take me to the hospital. Get over yourself. If something happened between us, my parents would take my side after all. They adore their blood-related child more. So you think they'll forgive you? For going on a trip under such circumstances? That's what I'm saying. Are you done now? Don't get in my way of fun. Bye-bye now. I got it. Hey, Nick. It's been a while. Are you enjoying your stay at the hospital? What do you want? What's with your response? Your dearest wife texted you for the first time in a few days. You should be happier. Too bad, but I don't have time for you. Life has been tough for me. What? Wait, are you actually sick? Are you going to die soon? Something like that. And? Why did you text me all of a sudden? You're on a trip, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I told the person I'm on the trip that you were hospitalized. Then I was told to check up on you. That's why I texted you. Oh, okay. You don't have to feel the need to text me. I know you don't like texting me when you're out having fun. I don't, but just checking. My parents have been calling me persistently, saying, What's wrong with you? You haven't come and seen Nick in the hospital. I kept ignoring them, and they stopped calling me today. I see. Your parents have been so worried about me. They come and see me in the hospital every day. What? Seriously? How sick have you been pretending to be? You're disgusting. You can act sick, but don't cause any trouble for my parents. I will divorce you if you tell them on me. I will be gone, so don't worry. What? You'll be gone? Did you say you'll be gone? You said it, right? What is this? Are you sicker than I thought? Well, the results were not good. Oh my god! This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. You're happy? You think I'm dying, right? And you're happy? You know, I will get an inheritance if you die now. What? Are you aware of what you're saying to me right now? We don't have to get a divorce if you die. And I can live happily ever after with him. Oh my god, I'm in heaven. Him? Oh, right. You didn't know. I haven't told you about this, but... I'm seeing somebody else. What the flip are you talking about? 
You're seeing somebody? You're married. It doesn't matter. A lot of married women have a boyfriend. I'm just one of them. <laughs> I've been worried about when I could marry him, but I'm so happy that the day is coming sooner than I expected. What? Are you perhaps on a trip with him right now? Bingo! You're so intuitive today. I'm in Hawaii with my boyfriend. I paid all the expenses with your salary, of course. <laughs> enough is enough. Just because I'm hospitalized and can't get out, do you think you can do just whatever you want? You're dying soon, right? Then stop quibbling. You can't spend your money when you're dead. I'll spend it all for you. I'm warning you. You won't get away with this. You're dying. Your warning doesn't scare me. Can I go now? I'm going jet skiing with my boyfriend. Enjoy your final days of life. Nick, I'm home. Your dearest wife is home. Aren't you here to welcome me? Oh, right, you're still hospitalized. Or are you dead? <laughs> oh, you are home. You have quite the nerve to come home after our conversation. Aren't you happy I'm home? You're still alive, by the way. You told me you'd be gone soon. I was looking forward to it. I'm so disappointed that you're still alive. I expected my daughter to be better than this. What? Your daughter? What are you talking about? You're my husband. All right. I'm texting from Nick's phone right now. I was so furious that I forgot about it. What? You sound different today. Did you just call yourself by your name? You don't know what's going on yet? You are texting your father. Dad? Wait, what? Why? You're lying! Nick has told me all about you. I was skeptical at first, but your message convinced me. I didn't know that you were such a horrible person. Wait, Dad! This is not what you think. There is a reason. I didn't mean what I said. You had been verbally abusive to Nick until you noticed you were talking to me. Did you think this kind of behavior was allowed as long as your mom and I didn't find out about it? No! I just gave him a warning because he said he caused you and mom trouble. He didn't cause us any trouble. We took him to the hospital because we were worried about him. But you've made excuses not to come to the hospital. You took advantage of Nick and have done whatever you've wanted. On top of that, you went on a trip with your lover? Enough is enough. How do you know all about it? Nick has known for a while now that you've been cheating on him. What? He did? But he felt too bad to get a divorce because we've been taking good care of him. But he said he's made up his mind now. He's reading our messages next to me right now. What? Is he alive? Of course he is. He's received proper treatment and fully recovered now. Why are you guys friends now? This is low, Nick. You laid the groundwork behind my back. He laid the groundwork? What are you talking about? We just support who's right. We gave up on you because you have no morals. What? You gave up on me? We're done with you. We're cutting off our ties with you. No! Wait, Dad! I don't want to cut my ties with you. The decision is final. Not only did you cheat on Nick, but you've also been stealing money from his savings, haven't you? How do you know about that? He's going to demand compensation for pain and suffering and for the money you stole from him. Make sure you pay up. Understood? If you don't, we'll hunt you down with all our relatives. No, please. Forgive me, Dad. I'm your daughter. Don't do such a cruel thing. You caused this. Reflect on yourself thoroughly and apologize to Nick. Bye. Dad? Dad! Mom! Wait! I apologize. Please forgive me. After a while, I demanded Katie and her lover compensation for pain and suffering through my lawyer. I had it paid in full. 
Katie's lover broke up with her, and she went to her parents' house for help after having lost a place to live. But she was not allowed to enter the house and was turned away at the door. <laughs> she is now in debt from paying me and the compensation. Serves her right for abandoning me in my time of need.